everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us today for our session focusing on Product Opportunity Explorer, deep diving into product research. My name is Yas and I'm on the Seller University team. So our presenters today will be Spencer and Brittany, who are both growth consultants at Amazon. So with that, I'll transition over to our presenters to get started. Yesterday, we gave an overview of Product Opportunity Explorer how it works, and how you can use it to find product opportunities. Today, we'll cover strategies for quickly finding specific opportunities for your business and for analyzing niches and products at a more granular level. If you missed yesterday's session, Product Opportunity Explorer is a tool that can help you better understand customer demand and generate new product or offer ideas. The tool uses niches to help you find relevant opportunities which are a collection of customer search terms and products that represent a specific customer need. For example, we group phrases like dress, dresses, and women's dresses to help you quickly identify customer needs. Niches are created using the top products receiving 80% of clicks from these search terms, which can help you focus on the products customers are responding to. Now let's jump into some strategies you can use to quickly find relevant niches where you can launch your next great product. Let's start by clicking on the find opportunities by category over here on the left hand side. And we'll choose a category or subcategory relevant to your business. So in this instance, we'll start in home and kitchen. We'll go to kitchen and dining and we'll choose bakeware. We could go a level deeper, but we're just going to stay at bakeware. So as you can see, there's 310 niches that are in the category bakeware in the United States. So that's a lot. Where do we start? Well, one way we could start is by utilizing the ascending and descending sort on both the search volume for the past 360 days or on the search volume of the past 90 days. So this way we can determine if we want to see the products with the top search volume or the ones with lower search volume. Now, determining whether to use past 90 or past 360 is up to you. Past 90 is really good for seeing recency or seasonality, uh, whereas the past 360 days is really good for viewing the kind of niches in a holistic view and being able to remove some of that seasonality element. Uh, so you might see something, a niche where it's got really great search volume in the past 90 days, um, but that's mostly due to seasonality. Something like a sunscreen or a bathing suit, you're going to see a lot more search volume for that just because it's summer. Uh, and then you can take a look at the past 360 to say, hey, does this make sense? Is this something that is, um, you know, just a seasonal flash in the pan or is there some, um, you know, long term search volume here for this product across a full year? We've been able to showcase that you can sort uh, from high to low to help figure out which of these 310 niches we want to be in. What we could do next is say, all right, we want to make sure that we're in a niche with high search volume. Uh, but then we can use this number of top clicked products column here, three from the right, uh, and figure out what niches we want to be in based on the number of products competing for those top 80% of clicks. So we could decide that say, you know, we want to make sure that there's not that much competition for that top 80%. So if we go through here, we can see Cupcake Tray has only six products that make up the top 80% of clicks. So now what we'll do is we'll actually go in here to Cupcake Tray and use the niche details to get a better idea of if this is where we want to be. So what we can see is when you go into that product section, we actually get a sense of how many products make up the number of top click products, make up that 80% and what their click share is. Uh, so here there's those six products and we can see that two of them have over 75% of that click share. Uh, so what's happening is that there's a lot of products here that um, are dom there's two products here that are dominating that click share. So maybe this isn't the, the niche that you want to be in because the distribution of click share is really limited to just two products. So we could go back and say, all right, where else would we want to be? 
Butane Torch is only at 22 number of top click products. So more so than the cupcake tray. Then we can go in and see, all right, is the click share just dominated by one or a handful of products? Is there a more even distribution? Um, and see if this is a niche that's right for us. Now, after we've determined whether or not um, it is, you know, taking that a step further too is looking at, all right, what do the insights look like? We can see here when within insights, okay, the number of products over the past uh, 90 days ago, 360 days ago, we can see how that's moved going from 22 today, 90 days ago, it was 27, 360 day ago, days ago, it was 29. We can even use the trends tab to figure out, okay, does that make sense? Because one of the metrics in the trends tab is going to be product count. So we can see how that has changed over time. And if you need a little, you know, more information, you can also even dive into insights and see, okay, maybe there's a lot of products in here, but we can also look at the number of brands information that is contained within Product Opportunity Explorer. Will it give us a sense of how many brands are spread across all these products? Um, is it just one brand that has, you know, 15 products or is it um, a lot of different brands that make up that kind of top 80% of clicks? So going back to the bakeware category here, uh, we've looked at how to use search volume and number of top clicks to narrow down the niches we're looking at. Uh, another way that we can do that is actually by looking at uh, average price through the filters. Um, so the filters button here is gonna be really great uh, to help narrow down and get this 310 niches reduced to more manageable number. Uh, so we'll click filter results here in the left hand side of the screen. And as you can see, there's a number of different filters that prop up. Uh, we can do search volume for the last 90, volume change, um, average units sold, number of top click products, and average price. And we can set minimums and maximums if we want to, or we can just set a minimum. So for instance, here for average price, we could set it at 25, and we can even go and put in a range and say we want to go 25 to 75. So if we click submit on that, now all of a sudden we've taken the number of niches down in Bakeware from 310 to 55. And now that we have those 55, we could actually take some of the steps we just did and sort by search volume. Then we can look at number of top click products and know that the results we're looking through here are within that price range we're looking at. So for instance, you know, baking pan sets uh, is one that fits within the price range we're looking at, but maybe it has more top click products than we're interested in. Um, although I will say that just because a niche has a lot of top click products doesn't necessarily mean it's a deal breaker, as that could mean that there are just less barriers to entry to get into that niche. Now, Product Opportunity Explorer can also help you find niches with an annualized opportunity. So let's actually leave Bakeware for a little bit, and instead, we'll go to a different category, Patio, Lawn, and Garden, which has 500 niches here. So we can put on a few filters to create an annualized opportunity, basically getting a sense of, you know, hey, I want to generate X amount with a new product idea, how can I find product ideas and niches that would help me do so? Uh, so using filters, the average unit sold and average price, fil average price filter to be exact, uh, what we can do is we can calculate that average opportunity or at least set that up as um, something to evaluate. So let's say for example, you have a target of 2,500 per month or 30,000 per year that you're looking for in revenue for new products. Uh, using these filters, we can set a minimum uh, average price of $10 and a minimum average unit sold of 3,000 to hit that 30,000 per year that we were looking for an annualized opportunity. So when we click submit, now all of a sudden we've gone from 500 niches to 171. And these 171 are all niches that are showcasing 
an annualized opportunity uh, greater than 30,000. And again, like I mentioned before, we can just use kind of those same strategies that we used earlier to say, okay, now that we have 171, how do we narrow this down further? You know, now looking at number of top click products, maybe it's raising the annualized opportunity that we're looking for, uh, sorting ascending to descending for search volume or for search volume growth to find out which ones are growing. Uh, so there's a few different steps that we can take after setting it up that way. But also be sure to remember that the average unit sold is for the past 360 days. Now, let's say that you're in the kitchen goods space and you focus on bamboo products and you're trying to find adjacent niches or new product ideas um, within that, you know, kind of realm of bamboo. Well, instead of doing the find opportunities by category, we can do the find opportunities by search and search for bamboo. And what that will bring us is 222 niches that match bamboo. Um, so, you know, we mentioned being in the bamboo kitchen space. So you can see there's bamboo plates, bamboo steamer, bamboo utensils. Uh, so all things within that category, but because we're not doing the find opportunities by category, we're doing find, find opportunities by search, we're also getting things outside of kitchen, like bamboo sheets, uh, bamboo earrings, bamboo socks. Uh, so if you want to stay within kitchen, there's opportunities here that you can see and explore, but there's also opportunities uh, outside of that. For instance, like I said, going into bamboo sheets. Now, alongside the product or offer ideas, what we can do is we can also use Product Opportunity Explorer to find top search terms related to your category. Uh, so once we've selected kind of that relevant category or searched for a term, uh, you know, we can either do this by looking at the search volume high to low. So we could see, all right, what has the highest search volume that's related somewhat to bamboo? You know, we can see that there's all these different things here where bamboo uh, is going to show up. Um, we can click into the different niches and then also see the search term search terms here uh, and we can see for instance like in cutting boards bamboo cutting board is the fifth highest search term but we can also see within these search terms you know the search volume growth both quarter over quarter or year over year or the click share or the search conversion rate um, so which search terms are converting um, really well in this niche which ones have the most click share in the niche, um, or really which ones are just growing the fastest. For instance here, cutting boards wood is the search term that's seeing the most growth year over year. Now we can also use Product Opportunity Explorer to better understand which aspects of products customers are responding to within a niche. And we can do that using the new Customer Review Insights tab. Now the Customer View Insights tab is available at both the niche and the ASIN level. So on the niche level, what this will do is it will aggregate common themes across the products within the niche. Um, so taking you know, these 42 products that make up the top 80% of clicks and aggregating those common themes that are both positive and negative that we're seeing within the reviews. So we can see here in the positive review snippet section, what we're giving you is a high level topic, for instance, ease of cleaning, the percentage of mentions that it's popping up within the reviews and review snippets. So give you a quick sense of what customers are saying, like really easy to clean, cleans well. And these review snippets are also taken from the last six months. So they're, they're recent reviews. They're not something from you know five, six years ago. They're from the last six months. Uh, we're also able to see, though, the negative feedback that customers are providing. So things like durability uh, is a topic here with, you know, 18% of mentions and customers saying not as durable. Um, so we're taking this information from the review section um, and aggregating it across all the products in the niche. So instead of you having to click into each product to read the reviews, it's all available right here. Uh, and then below, we have this impact on star rating chart where we can see which features uh, have the highest positive impact and negative impact on star rating. 
Now, I mentioned that this was at both the niche and the ASIN level, which brings us to our other new feature, which is the ASIN deep dive. So when we go and click on that product, that top product within the product section of the niche, it brings us to the ASIN deep dive page for it, which has a tab for product metrics and customer reviews insight. So this product metric section is going to give you specific traffic data like click growth. Um, we're going to see click count and then also other niches that a specific ASIN is going to appear in. So we can see that product clicks and trends. Um, we're able to see the trends tab here. So just like we have a trends tab in the niche view, we also have it on the ASIN view. So you can see how that review rating has changed within the last year, how the click count is going. Uh, the total review count, you can see how it's steadily increased. Um, you can even see the total offer depth. So have you know other offers been coming onto this ASIN? How many offers have been on it? Um, and how has that changed over time? That's all available in the trend section of the ASIN deep dive page. But also there's this section down here, niches product appears in, uh, which is gonna give you oversight into all the different niches that this product is showing up in. So this gives you an understanding of how many different spaces a particular product is competing in and can help you gauge the opportunity. Uh, for example, this ASIN we're looking at right here um, for the cutting boards is showing up in the cutting board niche, but also in kitchen gadgets. It's also showing up in camping cutting board and things like uh, mini cutting board and folding cutting board. So what we're seeing is that this product is showing up across multiple niches. It's not just limited to one. And now we can more easily navigate and see what those opportunities are between those niches. And just like I mentioned before, there's also a customer review insights tab too. Um, so just like on the niche side, uh, the ASIN version of the customer review insights is going to take the customer review feedback from the last six months and give you a sense of what we're looking at in terms of customer feedback so like ease of cleaning um, as well as you know false advertising or durability for negative review topics so these are things that we're we're seeing as different customer review insights that are aggregated just from the reviews on this specific product and just like on the niche level there's an impact on star rating chart um, so it's going to give you a sense of which of these topics is having the biggest impact on star rating. So you can use that to figure out, um, you know, how do you want to develop new products? What you, uh, topics and features you want to focus on that are either being positively received, negatively received. Um, it gives you different insights into how you can build out the products that you want to build. Um, and that's all through the customer review insights tab.